Hello, this is Professor BRB. In this tutorial, we will learn how to take a vector icon like this train here and convert it into uh, an interactive button in Adobe InDesign. We'll be working with buttons, uh, page navigation buttons, and we'll even learn to add some sound. So the first question you're going to be asking is, where do I find these icons? And of course, there are a lot of places that you can find icons to work with. First of all, you can draw your own. Uh, this is a vector icon, which means it was drawn in Adobe Illustrator. Another great source is to look on this website called The Noun Project. There are tens of thousands of icons created by tens of thousands of artists on the Noun Project, which you can download and uh, use for your own private use without uh, paying anything, or they can be purchased for as little as a dollar each uh, for use. So that's uh, really quite a great resource. And um, you can find an icon for just about anything. For example, here I'm going to search for train, and you'll see there's a great selection of train icons, including this one, uh, the one we're going to be using, which uh, is public domain, which means it can be downloaded and used without attribution or without paying. Um, when you're looking for an icon for a button, I think it's a good idea to choose something with a little bit of directionality, meaning it looks like it's going somewhere. So. One of these is probably better than, um, say, one like this, where it's just facing towards you. So uh, when you're looking for your icon, choose something like this one, where you can kind of see that it's going in a direction, because that'll help out the user. When you download your icon from the Noun Project, you'll get a folder uh, with a number. I've actually renamed mine Train, so I'll know what it is. And the folder will have a PNG file, uh, SVG, which stands for Scale, Scalable Vector Graphics, and then a license, which explains the licensing requirements. And you can see this one is in the public domain, so we don't have to attribute it or pay any money. We're going to use the SVG, the vector version, uh, for this tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and open that with Adobe Illustrator. And if we go to View Outline, we can see this is a vector drawing uh, in three closed paths. That's perfect. But I want to make a few changes before I make it into my icon. I'd like to add some color. And I need to change it into an Adobe Illustrator format out of SVG. So I'm going to go File, Save As and choose Format here, Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to rename it Train, so I'll know what it is, and save. Okay. SVG is a very simplified format, and the swatches will have been removed, so I'm stuck here with no swatches, so I have to go down to my swatch library. And I guess I'll choose web here, since I'm working for the web. And uh, I'm going to put black into my swatches panel, and maybe choose a nice red. Get that into my swatches panel, so that I have something to work with. Actually, I really already have black, but uh, I wanted the swatch so that I could go to my color guide and see when I choose black, I get a nice selection of tints. And I want a like kind of a light gray for uh, my smoke here. And of course, make sure your fill box is on top. And then for the body of the engine, I want it to be red. So that's exactly what I want. So now I'm going to save that and close it. We're back in InDesign, and this is a document that we created 
in earlier videos in this playlist, and you can go back and build this document from scratch if you like, or you can download it from the link on the um, video description at artpoints.net. And in the previous tutorials, we created this kind of plain Jane navigation system here, and this time we want to make something a little more interesting with the trains. So uh, let's take a look at our pages panel here. And we want to go to our master page, which I've named a navigation. You always want your buttons to go on your master page. And let's take a look at our layers. And you can see that I have set my layers up with guides, background, images, type, and navigation. I'm going to lock all the other uh, layers and just leave navigation unlocked so I can select these buttons and delete them. Let's go back to normal view so we can kind of see what we're doing here. So I want to create a frame to hold my first train button. So I'm going to choose my rectangle frame tool and just quickly click here to get this dialog box. And uh, let's make this maybe about oh 55 pixels wide and 30 pixels high. If you're not in pixels in your document, you can go up and right click on your ruler and choose pixels, and then you'll be in pixels. So that's still selected. I'm going to go File, Place. Navigate to my folder here, and there is my train icon in AI format. Select that, open. Here we're going to go object fitting, fit content proportionally, and there is my train. It's pretty good. Button, uh, the, this is a little bit wider than I need it, so I can also go here, object, fitting, fit frame to content, and it tightens my frame up. Um, under view, display performance, let's choose high quality display so that we can see our train in all its kind of vector glory. If we refer back, to our starting document here. You'll notice that I have smoke on these two trains and that this train doesn't have smoke. And my logic was that this has reached the station because this is the go to first page button and this is the go to last page button. So I want two different versions of this train, uh, one with the smoke and one without. And that's very easy to do, fortunately. Just, um zoom out a little bit and with my selection tool I'm just going to option or alt drag this train over to make a copy and now I'm just going to crop my box down my frame to hide the smoke it's still there but it doesn't show so that's great and for this go to first page button I also want to make a little line here so that I get a sense that the train has stopped in the station, which will represent my first page. So let's make that uh, 1.5 wide, perhaps. And in the stroke panel, I'm going to give it a round cap. OK, I'm going to make it a little shorter. You can make yours look just however you want. But I, I think it's good to show the viewer that this is uh, kind of a terminal page. So I want to select the frame and the line and group them. So that InDesign, when I go to create my buttons, InDesign will see that as one object. So this is my base buttons here. So move this a little closer. In order to duplicate and flip these, I select both of them with my selection tool, and I check and make sure my reference point is set to the right. Hold down my Option or my Alt key, 
and click this button, flip horizontal. My Alt key creates a copy. So now at long last, we're ready to program our button. So let's select our uh, go, what will become our go to first page button here. Make sure we're in digital publishing workspace, buttons and forms, type button. And you notice now there's a little icon here that is showing that this is a button. I'm going to call it go to go to first page. I'm going to add the action now. Go to first page. Next, I want to create a rollover state so that the user, when they roll their mouse over the button, will see that something is different and that this is an active button. So I'm going to click here under Appearance Rollover. And right up here, I can change it to 50% opacity. And I'm going to add an effect, Satin, which gives it a kind of a nice shaded look. And I like that. So I'm just going to accept the default settings here, click OK, and return it to the normal state. So on this one, I'm going to go type button. I'm going to call it go to, go to previous page, action, go to previous page, rollover, 50%. And effect satin. Okay, back to normal state. Type button, name, go to go to next page, action, go to next page, rollover state, opacity 50 and satin. Okay, to normal. And here's our last button, our go to last page. Type button, name, go to last page, action, go to last page, roll over, change our opacity here to 50. And apply satin. Okay. And back to normal. So now we're ready to test. We can access the preview button down here at the bottom of the buttons and forms panel. It's going to come up kind of small, but let's make it bigger. We're on our master page here, so that's all we can see. If we want to view the whole document, we can set here preview document mode and then refresh. So here we are. If I uh, choose, you can see my rollovers are working. I go to go to next page. That's working. Go to previous page. Go to last page. And go to first page. So everything's working splendidly. The only thing I might want to add here is I might wish to add sound to some of the buttons. And uh, next I will show you how to do that. Before I can add sound to a button, I first need to import that sound into InDesign. So I'm going to unlock my bottom guides later, layer here and choose it. File, place, just the same as if we were importing a picture. And I have a train sound here in MP3 format, which is um, what InDesign requires. So I'm going to click Open. And I'm just going to put my little sound up in a corner here. Because it's on my Guides layer, it's going to be hidden underneath the background. So I can lock that layer again now. So let's choose our Go to First Page button, Buttons and Forms. I can add a new action. So you can have multiple actions for a button. So I'm going to click Add, Sound. And notice my train horn sound comes up. It's the only sound in this document. If there were more sounds, we would be able to choose between them. 
that looks good. So let's test it out and see if it works. Here we go. Should we refresh here? And there it is, working perfect. So in conclusion, uh, let's just go back and look at our page one here. And you can see that having um, these little icon buttons does add a little bit of a sense of whimsy and fun to the page, a little bit more exciting than just perhaps, perhaps regular arrow buttons would have been. Um, in future videos, we'll experiment with some other ways of making icon buttons uh, in the coming weeks.